In U.S., trade secret uh, is an IPR, but in European Union, it is not. They they do it in indirectly protected by by putting a clause in uh, in their different contracts and manage this uh, trade secret. So th there are different uh, geography has different types of norms. So it is important in this session to talk about uh, what are the global strategies one should embrace uh, to facilitate the open innovation. Now in Unilever and HUL, what we do, we have a code of business principle. I mean, we, everyone signs, I signed when I joined. It's, uh, it's like this, not knowingly infringing any third party's IP. So this is very, very important for us doing everyday uh, R&D or business, what we do every day. So uh, for us, contracts are very, very important. So the partnership we do, we have very diff you know, various type of contracts. So in the contracts we define uh, with clarity, the, you know, the no uncertainty is there so that you know, in future you know, litigation can arise. So uncertainty is resolved. Uh, second is both partners we defined um, uh, that what they can expect out of this partnership and also uh, what, what is expected out of both of them. So th these are the things we define in the contract so that contract become very important for us. So this, this is the context uh, I would like to give before handing over to uh, the speakers. Now I would uh, request uh, Mr. James uh, to talk about your talk. Thank you, Dr. Mahapatra. And a very good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon. Thank God, because, because, because Dr. Mahapatra mentioned that uh, the speakers have to keep the people awake. That is an innovative way also you have to be. Because anyway, all that I am requesting is, is open innovation, keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. That's it. Uh, you know, uh, well, we have a lot of friends from the industries to tell you about uh, their experience with uh, open innovation. And, uh, well, I am now from the academic listing, so I would be presenting the issue, the subject, open innovation from more of an academic perspective, from uh, my readings and uh, few interactions which I had with the uh, industry, but not from a personal experience of these things. Now, if you look at it, innovation, we had one conventional mode. That is, you, you have a problem, then you want to look into the solution to that thing. That's what uh, brings breakthroughs in science. Then what you do? You do research on that. For that, a company or an R&D firm, they invest. Once you invest, you want it to be prepared. No one, whether an individual or a firm, wants to invest and don't want to get it back. The re return could be either financial or different ways. Like even people talk about, what about uh, uh, non-profit organizations? When they also invest, they may not be asking for a financial return, but they want to see certain developments taking place or some name and all that. So here, when Firms invest mostly what they are looking for is the financial return from that thing. If you invested 1 crore rupees, you would see that 1 crore plus should be the return. So how do you ensure it? One way out is intellectual property, patent protection. With patent protection, you come to the market, a new product is developed. Then you further invest to develop the market on that. And this brings you the return and with that return you further invest in R&D then again it goes on. This is the traditional 
or what we you know, say the conventional mode of uh, this thing. This mostly happened within a within a limited circle. Like say like this hall. If you consider this hall as the the, the empire or the boundaries of a firm, the firm does it and they do everything. They don't give it out. What is open innovation, as Dr. Mahapatra mentioned, this is a term which has come into circulation of currency during the last 10-11 years. I am very happy that the organizers ITAG included this as a topic because this, I would say, is one of the hot topics. Although, well, we have here people with maybe companies with more than 100 years experience in open innovation, but for one, it was not referred to as open innovation. Number two, people really, including the firms, didn't understand the real nuances of uh, how it is happening. Now, this term has been made popular by uh, Professor Henry Chesborough. Uh, he, he defined it in a very beautiful way, which of course, uh, in a practical way, Dr. Mahavatra explains it to you in this thing. Otherwise, you say, it's uh, using external ideas, openness. You are not limited to your, say, as I, I give the example that within the room, now, the moment you open these doors, Fresh wind would be coming, fresh ideas would be coming up. Those are the things that matter. Making use of external ideas, at the same time the internal ideas. Then combining them in a, this thing. He beautifully explained it's not merely outsourcing. Outsourcing is a totally different, con you outsource something. Here outsourcing also comes there, but it's not only outsourcing, it's a kind of, uh, what I would say, a harmonious mix of internal and external ideas for creating innovative these things. I mean, uh, uh, I would not take time in explaining these things. This is essentially a kind of, this I took from uh, Chesborough's own book only, Closed Innovation, How It Is, which I explained to you uh, earlier. Uh, now, the, in the case of open innovation, the same example, it goes up in this thing. Now, let us look into a few, again, I'm totally relying on uh, Chesborough and a few other authors who have written on these things. Now, the earlier concept is, I am a company, I am, I selected the best brain in the country or in the world. Now, these are the best people, so they can come out with uh, the best. Nobody else is there. It's a kind of, this is a kind of uh, thing which uh, uh, mostly through the 20th century dominated the top management of various firms. And uh, to be frank, in the early stages, they really did reward because uh, they are picking up and all that. But then, the knowledge, there is a kind of sudden knowledge explosion. It's not a mere evolution, it's a knowledge explosion which took place. And people find that, uh, that kind of, uh, you know, I have this boundary, I have got the best brain. No, that alone is not sufficient. Even the best brains cannot solve. You need to open up. That is where the idea thing. Not all smart people are with you. There are others also there. So why not make use of it? Why not work in harmony with them? Then, another traditional concept was that if I mentioned to you about profit, if we are to profit from R&D, it should be with us only. We should find it, we should discover it, we should develop it. The moment it is out, we won't get that benefit. But now, the systems have changed, the competition laws and other things have changed. Now, even competitors, they have to cooperate with each other. One simple example is the, the mobile technology. In fact, uh, I mean, uh, uh, any mobile, see, each one is using the other's technology also. I mean, there's no piracy, no counterfeit, they pay for it. But that is the way it is, this thing. And it's, uh, well, uh, it has become very cheap. The second thing is the old market theory. First in the market leads to this thing. And in order to be first in the market, the conventional wisdom set, you discover it, so you go to the market first. Now, in the, 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 the marketing science, uh, this thing. You, number one, you need not always be the first one to be in the market. You can still profit if your product is better, if your product is uh, uh, more attractive, these things. And uh, that, is, that changes the whole this thing. So why not, uh, why, why should I close everything, why not open it? Business models. You develop a business model. Again, uh, a lot of these things happened in the kind of, um, uh, I would say again, mobile technology. Uh, one example is uh, Nokia. They were not the first one there, but the way they developed and they took over the, the then established giants. And uh, now it has become almost a household word. Uh, then, of course, uh, one conventional this thing is that you create the ideas, you win it. 
Yes, you if you create ideas, you'll win definitely. But then, it is not only your ideas. Why not make use of the others' ideas? Like look into this conference. If ITAG were to just discuss these things within their group of people, how many ideas would have been there? Given the best brains are there, led by Dr. Agarwal. But then you open up. People from all world over has come here. Various continents. Each one comes from different experience. Nobody is copying each other, but they come from different things. And then the ideas come, you say, by the end of tomorrow evening, the, 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 the amount of ideas. That's what's innovation. That is all, that is open innovation is this thing. Uh, then another thing where intellectual property is really concerned is, intellectual property is, well, we always tell in the class 